want to make sure that I acknowledge the sponsor of the show, Teach Henley, because Teach Henley sent me this new pack. They sent me the new Teach pack, so I just literally pulled the paper out, got it out of the mail, and I started going through it, and I got a little bit more excited than I should. You know what I'm saying? So they did send me the Teach pack, and I don't even know what this is yet. So I'm assuming this is what you get when you first uh, order your teach. And I don't know what this is. Oh, this is dope. This is absolutely dope. Is this a nail kit? Ladies, get this for the fellas. Fellas, don't wait for the ladies to get it for you. This is free. This just comes with it. 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. Literally. Oh, snaps. I didn't know that they were sending it like this. Real talk. So this is the nail kit that they sending you. All right. So now you ain't looking like a dusty dusty. This is a free gift straight from Teach. For the people that ordered the Teach, they got the small one for the little hands like mine's. They got the big joints for your toenails. And then uh, they got the joints at the bottom too. You know what I'm saying? For y'all, that's a little bit more crustier than usual. All right, so that's one of the free gifts that Teej got inside of the pack. And then, uh, what is this? It says, squeeze a quarter size amount of Teej Hanley body wash on the center of the wet bristles. Lather, scrub, rinse, and repeat for the perfectly satisfying wash every time. So that's inside of there also, right? Ooh, I can get my rubber ducky on right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Teach for sending me that uncomplicated skincare for men. And then uh, what we got in here? We got the actual Teach pack, right? So this is the normal Teach pack, but then they gave me the super size joint for the people. They wanted me to show the people exactly what they got when they ordered that, that first Teach pack when you're getting your 30% off your first order. And then you get your free gifts. You get two free gifts and then the 20% off for life. So the 20% off for life is a new thing. And... Um, Dang, I ain't even got my keys on me to open this up. Maybe I can use the, the little nail clipper thing. I ain't got to buy no nail clipper for my new joint downtown. And then you get all of the all of the washes, all of the scrubs, all of the AM, the PMs, and all of that stuff. So you got the whole thing inside of there for you to make sure you take care of yourself. But you got to make sure you take care of it every day. Right. We don't want to miss days. We don't want to be looking like dusty dusties. It does not absolve you from being able to make sure that you brush your teeth, brush your teeth. It don't fix the teeth problem. Don't fix you ironing your clothes. Don't fix you being able to take care of your business. But it absolutely makes sure that your skin is phenomenal, even when you go in between shaves. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Teach Henley. We absolutely appreciate you. Thank you for continuing to hold us down. Uh, I might do an official teach commercial, but I like just talking authentically to the people. I like giving the people the authentic look of what it is that you're dealing with. And I want you to hear from me personally, because anybody can do that little pitch and they can make some little videos. But very few of us can actually speak to the products uh, of exactly what it is that you're supposed to use. So, yeah, teach Hanley 30 percent off your, your first order and then 20 percent off for life. That's the Anton Daniels pack, 20 percent off for life using any other teach pack. Make sure that you go ahead and let that go um, and make sure you tap into the link. It's in the description and take care of it. All right. What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. It is Monday, April 8th, 2024, year of our Lord. <laughs> Phenomenal day. Man, I rode my, rode my bike over here from my... Uh, from the apartment or whatever. 70 plus degrees today. What more can you ask for? What more can you ask for? Thank you guys for continuing to rock with us. I appreciate you. Uh, shout out to everybody that participated in Stock Club last night. It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Stock Club was incredible last night. Shout out to the people that held me down, that made sure that they got all of that game, all of that money. I actually re-uploaded uh, the live stream from Stock Club last night onto the Patreon. So if you are a bag chaser and you are a Patreon member, make sure you tap in and you watch the most recent. Matter of fact, 
Watch it from January and then go over and watch Stock Club that we did yesterday, uh, last night. And we went into banking and we went into banking stocks and we talked about Chase and Bank of America and Wells Fargo and compared and contrast and broke down the management and exactly what you should look for when you look in a invest in a banking stock and then we compared it to Capital One and you know we talked about the credit card uh, as far as the different sectors and how they overlap and things like that so if y'all not a part of the Patreon then please don't even talk to me because we break it all the way down from a C student's perspective and we really really try to add as much value into you guys life as possible and then I also got another video that I've been working on that I'm dropping this week inside of the Patreon that's an exclusive um, and that's probably a good hundred thousand dollars worth of game right there. So y'all missing out. Genuinely, you missing out. So I would invite you guys to become a part of the Patreon. We also want to acknowledge, and that link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I also want to acknowledge the sponsor of the show, Teach Hanley, 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. If you are not a part of the Teach Pack, then make sure you get that Teach Pack. Also, we got a couple new sponsors that we're going to be unveiling over the next week or so. Uh, one of them is uh, a water company that we recently did a deal with. We don't want to announce that yet, but shout out to the water companies that acknowledge what we got going over here on the Anton Daniels and the Millionaire Morning Show. And then we got something else that's related to the upcoming NFL draft in Detroit. We did a deal with that. And so, if you, again, again, it's too much to get out here. It's too much to to source and if y'all not getting the bags and if you're not a part of the bag chaser then i genuinely 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 um want you guys to 100 percent stay on top of that god bless you you guys are absolutely awesome we about bags we about money we not we not about that dusty life and i'm gonna talk about that in the more in a minute when we get over to the j cole situation because there's lessons to be learned there are lessons to be learned from this whole J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar situation. But we're going to get into that. We're going to spin it around. We got a lot to cover. Uh, shout out to my people. What's up in the chat? Can I get one word in the chat to see how you guys feel today? One word. And I see you messy. I see you true to myself. Your car is in the building. Cartez Cookies, Next Level MF, Antonio Watkins, Spaces. What's up, y'all? What's happening? Man, this weekend was incredible, wasn't it? We had uh, After Hours, that was lit. Osriel, I see you, Ari Reed. We had Stock Club and the Patreon, Trap and Slay. Man, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy out here in these streets, right? Give me one word. Focus, sleepless, stoic, inspired, hey, focus, busy, unwavering, grateful, good, accomplished, elevated, Working like a slave, loved, awesome, Panna, motivation, love, better, working, thankful, good, nice, eclipsed. Y'all ready for the eclipse? Blessed, focus. I don't care about the eclipse. Driven, grateful, um, intentional, remarkable. What up, Tia? Good morning to you all. So good. Living, grateful, working. What's up, Island? Chris James, what up, though? Yeah, we did a four-hour stream on After Hours. It was so good. Determined, all right? Uh, magnificent vacation. Appreciate. Shout out to all of my people. Um, better, humble, thankful, tired, need prayer. You stress. God bless J. Clip. Remove stress. Remove problems. We're going to get into that. I, I got a lot of conversations from that. We're going to talk about Dave Ramsey. We're going to talk about, um, this J. Cole situation. Brandon Johnson pushing for migrant undocumented worker permits, um, the whole Biden situation, black people, new student loan forgiveness is being introduced. It's a lot to go over. It's a, it's a lot to go over out here in these streets. Hold on. Let me fix something really quickly. I see something I got to fix real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, we're going to fix that. All right. So y'all ready to get started with the show? Again, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Also on top of that, again, Teach Hanley, 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. And then last but not least, last but not least, I'm going to get into that Twisted Puff. Give me a second. 
Last but not least, I want you guys to make sure that you hold each other down, do the thing that's in your best interest, and continue to run it up. Let's go ahead and get started with the show. Let's start with quick hits, then we're going to get into this. You know what? I'm going to go into quick hits shortly. Let me get into this J. Cole situation. I want to share my thoughts on this, right? Because I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning, and I seen a J. Cole apology. Now, for those of you that's not familiar with it, because I know that we have a big audience, a wide audience of people that join this show, people that's in church, people that's in the streets, people that's truck drivers, people that work from home, men, women, age don't matter. We all about that bag and we want to stay informed on what's happening out in the streets, right? So I woke up this morning, obviously, after J. Cole had dropped a response um, track to Kendrick Lamar going back and forth as far as the beefing and the dissing and all of that stuff, right? And I woke up this morning and I seen J. Cole had did a Dreamville, um, he did his show on Dreamville where he basically was breaking down um, what his thoughts were about responding to Kendrick Lamar in the first place. And I think that this is really, really relevant in my life personally right now. And so I'm going to share this guy with you guys really quickly. And then we're going to get into quick hits and we're going to start tackling the show. All right. So this is J. Cole and this is largely him breaking down what his thoughts are as far as him responding to the beef and going back and forth with other people. Check it out. It's one part of that shit that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people want to hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, nah, I don't do that, but I got to keep it 100 with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because y'all heard some shit that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was chopped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world and I got my niggas like, what you gonna do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, bitch boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh my fucking God. Text flooded, I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's war time. <laughs> Niggas want to see blood. And, and I was conflicted because, I was you know what I mean? And like, I know how I feel about my peers, these two niggas that I just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase their greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way, but the world want to see blood. I don't know if y'all can feel that, but the world want to see blood. So I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was, that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my nigga back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel, that shit disrupts my fucking peace. So what I want to say right here tonight, is in the midst of me doing that and, and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers that ever touched a fucking microphone? Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro. That was the lamest, like, goofiest shit. And it made, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot, I'm gonna take that shit on the chin, boy, do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good, like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep in it and then I can get back to my true path because I ain't gonna lie to y'all past two days felt terrible like it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years so all of that to say man I want to I want to now perform the song that's a reminder to me of getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God and the name of the song is called love yours I want to do so I wanted to play that because this message actually resonates with me 
this message actually resonates with me. So if you see in the chat right now, if you see in the chat right now, there's a bunch of people that say, oh, man, you started before the beef went out and all of this stuff. You know what I found personally, me personally, and this really, really spoke to me. It really, really spoke to me. This is what the game is missing. Rap is hardcore or whatever. You can't, you can't put a price on peace. You can't put a price on peace. I would say me, for me personally, uh, for a while now, I mean, I woke up, I looked out the window, and I seen the sun rising, and I knew it was going to be 70-something degrees, and I couldn't wait to jump on my... I wasn't looking forward to jumping in a car. I was looking to actually jumping on my bike, my little bicycle. And I rode my bike into the office, and I actually ran into some police officers, and it was like, what up, Tom? And we spoke, and we kicked it for a minute, and then I went to the egg place, and I got me a little eggy muffin, and I, and I went in, and I stopped, and I started vlogging, and then I started thinking about all of the people that I put on my hit list. And when I say my hit list, I'm talking about as a content creator, everybody that you know, I was, people keep sending me stuff every single day. I get an email every single day, at least one every day. Anton, you going to respond to this person? And so, you know, sometimes after a while, I started letting that junk put a battery in my back. And I'm like, oh, you know, I guess you want the old time back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I don't even feel like that. You know what I'm saying? So it, I think it's a difference when you, are steadfast and you go toe to toe in a debate or something like that or a debate show where you're trying to get a point across or you're trying to reach a new audience or you're really trying to re uh, resonate with people. And that was cool at a time that it was cool for, for me. For me, it was cool. And the beautiful part about a lot of, a lot of different segments of life is that you can learn anything from anybody, whether you're looking at the business sector or you're looking at the rap sector or you're looking at the culture, you're looking at relationships, you know, you, you're looking at what's people doing in the streets or whatever. You literally can learn anything from anybody. You know what I'm saying? And so I start like checking myself and kind of doing a self-evaluation and I'm like, man, is me beefing with this content creator who got 3,000 followers or that content creator that may have 20,000 followers, am I really tapping into a new audience? Is this really beneficial to the movement that we, that we got going on as far as the bag chasers? Is it worth, here's the question that I ask myself, is it worth disturbing my peace and distracting me from the thing that I really wanted to talk about when I woke up this morning? Do I want to put that on the back burner and talk about something that's not even conducive for what I got going on and disturb my peace? And then I ask myself, okay, so what's the point? Let's say I go in and I talk, jack, talk junk and I go back and forth and all of that stuff, right? And then what? Does it make me more money? Does it help people? Okay, so people got a difference of opinion. Then what? Somebody said con content creation and rap is different. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 100% not. And that's why I say you can learn different things from different people. And again, it's not worth my sleep. It's not worth me going back and forth. It's not worth me creating a whole stream in order to big them up and make them more visible. From my people, I'm going to let them big me up and make me more visible to their people, not the other way around. And I feel so good. I haven't had this much sleep and this much peace and this much love. And, you know, when I jumped on the, uh, the, the live stream for Stock Club last night and we was all in there and people was asking questions, I was so excited. I was very much excited. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, eh, eh, you got it. You got it. You got it. Have fun. God bless you. You know, 
I don't care. I will respectfully ask you guys this, right? This is what I want to ask of you guys. Please, if anybody is talking negatively about me, don't send it to me. Don't email it to me. I don't care. You don't have to DM me. None of that. None of that. If you see somebody say something about me, you don't even have to defend me. I know y'all love me. I know y'all go at people. I know y'all want to hold it down. I give you, I, if you rock with me, I give you permission to just rock with me. Be entertained, have fun, and then at the end of the day, let's come and get this money, man. Now, that don't mean that we not going to get into debates when it's conducive, when we actually see value and reaching a different audience or going on another platform. It don't mean that we're not going to talk our talk. It don't mean that we're not going to do reactions in order to bring out the, the best, right? But the fact of the matter is, I don't. I, I like good sex, great money, good food, traveling, good energy, and then hopefully adding value into people's lives. So I understand if people like, you know what? <laughs> that's not what we want to see then go and tap in the other content creators that can give it to you i don't have any energy for it if it's not if it's not about growth if it's not about success if it don't make no extra money if it's not a long-term business opportunity that we can capitalize as a result of it if it messes up my new deals that i got on the table actually i want to drink this one we got a new water deal coming. Shout out to the new water deal. If it ain't running up the bag. New, new opportunity for the upcoming draft. If it ain't about that, and it's not actually beneficial, nah, don't smoke signal me. I don't care. Don't let me know. I just don't. I don't want that. I'm not interested in that right now. It doesn't do anything for me. I was chilling with my daughter. And it's funny because I was chilling with my daughter. And we having a conversation. And I, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing a little touch up or whatever. So on and so forth on, on Sunday morning. And then I get an email. And I look at the email. And it's like, oh, man, this person is talking about you. I'm like, I put it down. Me and my daughter start laughing again. We start talking about what we was going to go out to breakfast and go and get and stuff like that. You know, I start, I call, talk to Rita because she out traveling, having a good time, chilling out with, with the family and stuff like that. And she doing what she doing. And we, we, <laughs> life is so good. It's just, it's just so good. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, y'all ready to go ahead and get started with the show? That's what I personally learned from J. Cole. Uh, I resonate more with Cold World than I do with anybody else. So God bless y'all. I know that other people are chasing other things. Good luck with that. <laughs> Let me read some of the super chats and then we're going to get started with the show. Wendell Kilgore is in the building. Says, good morning, AD, and good Monday to you. Keep cooking. <laughs> Keep cooking. Shout out to Wendell, Wendell Kilgore. I appreciate y'all. Chris James in the building. <laughs> Shout out to Chris James, always holding me down, putting up. And, and Chris James is rich. Chris James is rich, rich in real life. <laughs> Shout out to Chris James, man. Thank you for the 50 ball. Sister is in the building. <laughs> Says, Mr. AD, if you purchased Tej last year with your link, would the new deal be applied automatically? I don't think so. I think you got to make that adjustment. Email me, uh, sister, and I, I see that. I go and call, call my rep and see if we can get that figured out. Mayno, 1135, says, not only is J. Cole on another level of self-peace, he's also happily married with kids and has over $100 million in the bank. I don't know how much money he got in the bank. I can't substantiate that. He realizes it's not worth it and salutes him. Facts. For real. I mean, I think that that's, uh, that's absolutely. Shout out to my dog, Mike, that dude in the building. I appreciate you. And then Michael. Shout out to Michael came through with another ball. <laughs> Shout out to Michael. All right, y'all ready to go ahead and get started with the show? It is Monday. Hopefully, we can go ahead and run it up. 
and keep it popping. Shout out to Tia Marie. Tia Marie is acknowledging the greatness. Tia Marie says, I love seeing spiritual growth and elevation. I knew you had some inner earthy in you. <laughs> <laughs> um sending you some incense and candles i like it i like candles i don't know about the incense yet i don't know about the incense yet but i definitely like candles if y'all want to send me some candles i'm all for it i'll be having my little candles playing out chilling jawan hart says man quentin got that west side gun work on after hours from og boom 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 quentin is a good sport quentin is my guy I love Quentin. Quentin is my guy. I rock with him 100%. My man, 100 grand. Shout out to Quentin, my dog. All right, y'all. Y'all ready to get started with the show? Again, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I only got energy for coming and running up this bag right now. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. So, quick hits. Uh, hold on. There we go. Quick Hits is a segment of the show that we want to dedicate to making sure you guys stay informed of what's happening out in these streets, man. All right. Uh, first and foremost, a Fayetteville Walmart shooter surrenders after being on a run. Check it out. Here's the latest on a story we brought you is breaking news on Good Day Atlanta this morning. Police now have in custody the 19-year-old accused of murder at the Fayetteville Walmart last Friday night. Adrian Jelks has turned himself into authorities. Fox 5's Doug Thank Evans you, has the full story. The magistrate court here in Fayette County confirmed to Fox 5 that Adrian Jelks had his first court appearance early this morning. This all played out overnight Wednesday. Adrian Jelks is charged with murder and aggravated assault for the shooting at the Fayetteville Pavilion Shopping Center last Friday night. A Walmart worker, he's accused of opening fire inside the entrance of the store where he worked. Police say 19-year-old Antavius Holder was shot multiple times and died there at the scene. A nine-year-old little girl was also hit by the gunfire and was injured. Fayetteville police say Jelks turned himself in at the College Park Police Department around 2 a.m. Wednesday morning. Fayetteville police then brought him back to the Fayette County Jail where he was booked. Fayetteville police say after the arrest of Jokes, they were releasing no further information to protect the integrity of the investigation. What is still unclear days later was the motive for the shooting. As you can imagine, the shots fired there Friday night around 10 p.m. caused panic and sent shoppers running for safety. It was a chaotic scene. That night, police arrested a Woman they identified as Jokes' girlfriend. Police say they have charged Sandra Romero Nunez as a party to the crime. One other piece of information that Fayetteville police released with the news about Jokes' arrest concerned the littlest of the victims, the nine year old little girl. Police say she's expected to make a full recovery and now has been released from the hospital. It's unfortunate that. Um... We have no real respect for human life. We have no real respect for human life. Walking around with a pistol, girlfriend with the red hair, people putting that battery in your back, ultimately a nine-year-old girl got hit, and you supposed to be going in there and stocking them shelves and making sure that the, the people get their they items out, and now you arrest it, and it's a possibility you can go to jail for the rest of your life, and you never, ever get out. Now you got to deal with Fleece Johnson. Should have watched the Fleece interview. Should have watched the Fleece interview. Now you got to deal. See, you could have walked away. You could have walked away. You could have decided to do something different. You could have decided to go in a different direction. You could have went on a whole nother path with your life. In a split second and in a split instance, you decided that you wanted to go and kick it with Felice Johnson. Ms. Lee says, can't even fight it out. I'm not interested in fighting with nobody. You know, I seen a, um, a story before where somebody got into a fight and one person hit somebody in the head and then they fell and hit their head on the concrete and died and then the person wound up getting charged. I'm not about to sit here going back and forth with these people. I'm not about to fight with nobody. I got a daughter. Some of y'all got future kids that's not even born yet. 
you hanging around people that don't add value into your life. And in a split second, now you booked in jail and you hanging out and you getting your stripes that way. Now, now you can get brolic in prison for the next 13, 14, 15, 16 years, hopefully with good time. It's not worth it, man. Anyways, on top of that, in addition to that, uh, a woman was found shot to death in her vehicle, also in Atlanta. Take a look, y'all. We're staying on top of breaking news right now. Unfortunately, a woman is now dead. She has been killed in an overnight shooting in southwest Atlanta. Atlanta News First John Shipman is live with the first alert breaking news tracker along Cleveland Avenue, just off of I-75. So, Don, what are you learning? Atlanta police uh, held a briefing a short time ago, and they tell us that a 42-year-old woman from Atlanta was killed in this shooting, uh, at least a single gunshot wound. The vehicle happened inside, uh, I should say, the shooting happened inside a vehicle, but they say that the shooting didn't happen here at this gas station. We have a look here at the scene. Uh, the police just wrapped up about 20 minutes ago. This whole area was actually cordoned off with that police tape, and there were several police vehicles here, including those crime scene investigation vans. The police investigation was centered around an SUV near the gas pumps of this BP gas station on Cleveland. Uh, here's the thing, though. Police say the shooting didn't happen here. The driver of the vehicle actually flagged down an officer right around 1230 while driving up to the gas station. Police wouldn't say if they have a suspect in custody, only that they're questioning that driver. We do not have a location. We do know it's inside the vehicle and they were flagged down by the by uh, the officer was flagged down. So the shooting took place in the vehicle? Yes, sir. So police are still processing the evidence that they collected here from the gas station. That includes surveillance video, a lot of cameras here at this gas station. Ladies, it's not safe for you out here. I don't know how many times I got to tell you all this. You got to be careful of the company that you keep and the stuff that you get yourself involved in and the people that you surround yourself by because it's not safe for you out here. And most of the time when you see a woman involved, and then she get into some kind of confrontation or she attached to it. You know, there's people out here that will take you out just for being associated with the wrong crowd, with the wrong crew and the wrong crowd. I remember back in high school, it was these little girls and they was always into the dude, the dope boy that came and came and pick up the little girls from high school. And one of them little girls got hurt. One of them little girls got hurt just because she was associated with him. Just because she was around him, and you need to be careful of the people that you that you like, the company that we almost need to redo life, like remix it. I understand why the why why God flooded the earth. I genuinely understand why God flooded the earth. One hundred percent. We almost just need a complete start over, a complete redo, and to just do it all over again. This is sad. Um, last but not least, this story really, really weirded me out because I didn't understand it, but a, a woman female corrections officer was arrested for raping an inmate. Y'all got to help me to understand what's going on here. I'm confused. A Lexington correctional officer has been arrested for allegedly raping an inmate multiple times. News source Tanner DeLeon breaks down those charges she faces. Tanner. Well, not even 24 hours after Representative J.J. Humphrey called the state to once more investigate the Department of Corrections, another alleged rape took place inside the Lexington prison, causing Humphrey to once more demand action to be taken. Oh, absolutely not. You shouldn't be subject to rape. You should not be. And I was infuriated not long back where they said, well, these are isolated incidents. Last Wednesday, Republican Representative J.J. Humphrey called for an outside agency to investigate the Department of Corrections as deaths, overdoses, and rapes continue to rise in Oklahoma prisons. The very next day, Jennifer Root, a corrections officer at the Lexington Correctional Center, was arrested and charged with three counts of forcible sodomy. I'm trying to understand how this works. She stuck a wire hang... Oh. <laughs> so... You telling me that female officers is out here doing crazy stuff like that too? Jesus Christ, seriously? 
women have become that evil too? Are women as evil as men or are they are they worse? Are women just as bad as men or are they worse? I, I just couldn't even imagine. What are you talking about? And two counts of sexual battery for allegedly having sex with an inmate. According to the arrest report, Root told investigators she engaged in sexual activity with the same inmate on at least five occasions, and at least one was caught on video. We spoke to Representative Humphrey again today. When you see one of these cases a year, not such a big deal, but when you start seeing them back to back to back to back, and when you start seeing the number of deaths we've had, when you start seeing the number of ODs we have, and then you know there's a problem, we reached out to the Department of Corrections who told News 4 in part, quote, We do not tolerate this type of behavior from any staff member. It is our mission to provide the safest environment possible for those incarcerated in Oklahoma. We will continue to remove bad actors and spotlight our dedicated staff who fulfill our mission. Now, Humphrey is still calling for an outside investigation into the DOC, saying these incidents will continue to happen if something isn't done. Women are out here sodomizing each other you know that's that's a that's a new thing for me i guess i wasn't really familiar with what was going on inside of women's prisons like that i didn't know that y'all was out here beating each other up and doing the same thing that they was doing inside of the men's prisons okay well i guess that's just the way that it goes be careful hide your kids Take care of them, grow them up in a two-parent household. Don't put them in a position to have to suffer at the hands of corrections inmates, whether you a man. Wait, 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 this is an immense prison. Are you sure, well building journey? Okay, wait a minute. Let me do a little bit of research. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that. Let's see. A uh, Lexington corrections officer has been arrested for allegedly raping an inmate multiple times, not even 24 hours. Okay. Uh, yeah, we already seen all of that. Um, how How is she able to do that in a men's prison? How, how, is she able to, how is she able to do that to a man? How is that possible? I'm so confused. If they, how, how was she able to do that to a man? A man. Bro, even if you got me handcuffed and it's just you and you a girl, you getting a beat down. No way, no freaking way. How? Somebody explain it to me. I, somebody said, why do you think she did it to a big, strong man? I don't care if it's a little man. Dog, she a woman at the end of the day. Ain't no way in the world you telling me that she was able to do this. By herself? Man, get out of here, bro. Get out of here, man. Y'all not convincing me of this one. Y'all said she had a gun. Well, you just got to kill me. You got to kill me. I don't care what y'all talking about. Y'all wild. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your quick hits. How? How? If it's consensual, then how is it rape? <laughs> y'all wild, bro. Let me read a couple of these super chats, and then we're going to go ahead and get into the thick of things, into the real show. All right, Cartez Cookies in the building says, Anton, isn't it your birthday this week? Yes, it is. I wasn't going to say anything. Uh, but one of the things that's beneficial about it being my birthday this week is that this year it falls on a Saturday. <laughs> falls on a Saturday. So my birthday is actually the 13th. So this Saturday, um, I'm going to chill out. I'm going to just chill, ride my bike, hang out. Hopefully the weather is good. And then the weekend after that, I'm going to be shooting over into um, a different state. 
I'm living my life offline. I'm living my life offline, right? So, yeah, man, I'm 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 chilling. My birthday is gonna be on Saturday. I'm chilling. I got I I'm gonna be having a good time. I'm chilling with y'all. I ain't trying to be beefing with nobody on my birthday. You know what I'm saying? Cartez cookies. How you remember that? Messy mathematician says hit the likes. Jab turkeys. Yes. Maybe I'll have a special Friday birthday live stream on Friday or something like that. Uh, Minnesota County Unsolved Crime Channel says she's a transformer. <laughs> now nah, I'm really confused. Now y'all really, really got me confused. Thank you for all of the early birthday wishes. I appreciate y'all. Uh, let's go ahead and deep dive into the show. All right. So let's start off with Oakland. All right. I want to start off with Oakland because it seems as though Oakland has been on my radar and people have been sending me so much. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. People have been sending me so many different stories about everything that's happening in Oakland. Uh, it seemed like ever since Keith Lee went over there and was like, hey, of all the places that I've never visited, this is probably the one that I don't want to go to the most. It seems like Oakland has just been on the radar for being one of the worst places over on the West Coast um, to raise a family. All right. So we're going to break it down from a completely different perspective. We're going to go 100% business on this one. And the Oakland A's, uh, the final nail in the coffin for the Oakland A's, the athletics, the baseball team, have decided to relocate and move away from Oakland. And here's why. The other cleat dropped today. After 56 years at the Oakland Coliseum, it is game over for the athletics in Oakland. The A's announced this morning they will leave the East Bay in 2025 and move to a temporary home in West Sacramento. They're going to play at the Sutter Health Park, which is home to the minor league Sacramento River Cats. The two teams are going to share that facility. A's president Dave Cavill says a deal with Oakland was just not a viable option. You know that you really, really want to leave and that there is no way for y'all to come to an agreement as a city. When you are on the West Coast and your team decide to leave early. Hold on, think about this for a minute. You didn't just leave Oakland, but you decided that you wanted to go play in a temporary facility that is already housing a much, much, much smaller team over in Sacramento. Now, of course, we know that they're going over to Vegas, right? We know that they're moving to Vegas. That's one of the reasons why they're tearing down the Tropicana. But that's bad. It's bad when you leave your own home park in order to go play somewhere else until you can go and get to your permanent location in a completely different city. That's pretty freaking bad, bro. And he says this also gives the Sacramento area the chance to prove it can support a big league team full time. I think the next three years are going to be a great way to showcase the interest in baseball. I mean, that's already happened with all the great success here with the River Cats over the years. I think these next three years will be a continuation of that. Now, the A's and the River Cats have a deal for the 2025 through 2027 season. The A's have an option for the 2028 season if their Vegas uh, ballpark isn't ready. Now, as Sacramento cheers, Oakland fans are hanging their head and shaking them. Barry fans say the A's decision to head to the state capitol is disappointing, but not necessarily surprising. Oakland and Alameda County had been negotiating with the A's owners until recently, even yesterday. Here's NBC Barry Sidho Quintana with more on what this means now for the Coliseum and for fans left behind. Fans are not shy about their reaction to today's announcement that after this season, the A's will play temporarily in Sacramento until the team stadium in Las Vegas is completed. I don't like it at all. I'm loyal to the to where I live, and the A's should be in Oakland. A kind of well, now you can go visit them in Sacramento until they go over to Vegas. Vegas is starting to look like that spot, though, on the low. I mean, they got that Raiders stadium. Vegas has one of the most lit hockey teams inside of the United States of America. They, people, you know, the people that's from Vegas or the people that live in Vegas, they similar to the people that live in Miami, right? The people that stay there, a lot of times, they really are not out and participating with the spaces that they supposed to be in. The, one of the benefits from Vegas is that they got a huge population of people that come from all over the world to come and visit Vegas, right? But the people that live in Henderson and places like that in Vegas, 
they don't really go to the strip. They don't really be out here going to the concerts and stuff like that. They just stay in their little suburb. A lot of them moved over from Los Angeles because they wanted to avoid the taxes, but they still wanted to be close enough to get back to L.A. But, man, Vegas is starting to be that spot. Once they get an NBA team, I think that they're going to get an NBA team. I think LeBron might be getting a Vegas team at some point, but check it out. Glad they're leaving, you know. Uh, kind of sucks that the uh, big promotions, or sorry, big uh, sports organizations are taking taxpayer money and they're pretty much holding the city hostage. According to the Oakland mayor's office, negotiations to keep the team at Oakland Coliseum continued all the way up till yesterday. The city and county had asked the team to pay $97 million for five years of play with some caveats, which the A's rejected. Yesterday, city and county negotiators proposed $60 million for three years. But this morning's announcement confirmed the A's ultimate rejection of that offer as well. For some city leaders, this ends a drawn out and often painful fight to keep the green and gold rooted in Oakland. The lack of attention, um, the lack of support for the city, for, the, for their fans. Uh, you know, like I said, let's just kiss and say goodbye. I'm going to miss you, but let's just kiss and say goodbye. According to Oakland City Council member Noel Gallo, the wounds won't end when the team leaves. City and county taxpayers are still paying off. Somebody said, just be careful. Vegas has a high HIV rate as well. I wasn't planning on having no uh, outside sex. <laughs> Big J, what you talking about out here in these streets? Hold on. <laughs> Big J, what you talking about? Just be careful out there because Vegas got a high HIV rate as well. Hold on, Big J. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Big J. What we talking about, big dog? What we talking about? What you what you mean they got a high HIV rate? I, I we wasn't planning on having no wild sex, was we? Was y'all planning on having some sex out there in Vegas and catching HIV? Or something? Am I off? Or are we are we all off? Was y'all planning on doing something that I wasn't familiar with? I might be off. I don't know. I could be off, but I was not expecting to do anything outside of the norm except go and have a good time and maybe throw some money on the table and go to some shows. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't expecting to go out there and get get the hive. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't have to worry about being careful. You can't just catch it by breathing, I don't think, yet, okay? Millions of dollars in bonds from prior efforts to expand and renovate the Coliseum. Jay, how you, know, how you know about that, Big Jay? Plan to attract to professional to soccer teams here. to the venue will help fill the gap created by the A's and the Raiders before them. Meanwhile, there's been no word on what the A's plan to do with the team's 50% ownership stake in the Coliseum. Fans of the A's have been in open revolt against the team's owner, John Fisher, ever since he announced plans to leave for Las Vegas. A group even organized a boycott at the season opener this year with the goal of pressuring him to sell the team to someone who would keep it here. Today's announced move to Sacramento made that worse. I know uh, season ticket holders that stopped going. And so, yeah, no, I, we can't support them if they can't support us. This deal means the current season will be the 57th and final in Oakland. The team will play next year's season at Sutter Health Park in Sacramento, which has a seating capacity that's about a third of the Coliseum. They don't care because wasn't nobody going to the games inside of Oakland anyway. And so if they got a seating capacity that's only a third of the Coliseum, they getting that TV money anyway. So I don't think that Oakland really cares. Uh, I think that Oakland had already made up a day mind that they was leaving and they wasn't even going to keep a temporary uh, team there. They had made up their mind. They was tired of it. The people had already made up their mind that they wasn't supporting them no more. So it, it was time for them to go. It was time for them to go. But here's the other side of it, right? Because it's not just about Oakland leaving. It's about how it affects businesses, revenue, money, and all around. I remember when LeBron James left Cleveland and the economic impact to that area and to that city the first time that he left was substantial. I mean, it was massive, which then justified the high amount that you pay a certain player, the Steph Currys, the LeBron James, the Giannis's, all of that. When LeBron James left Cleveland, it was like, whoa, it's, it knocked the breath out of that city. And this is what's happening with the businesses 
around the Oakland athletics and, and the athletic facilities uh, that people were supporting as a result of it. Turning to Oakland now, the A's announcement to leave Oakland after this season certainly hurts sports fans, but it's also another major economic blow for the Hagenberger business corridor. Some East Oakland residents tell Da Lin that the A's departure and recent business closures are setting the Hagenberger area back decades. Retired city officials tell me it took decades to convince companies to invest in East Oakland and the Hagenberger corridor. Many people are angry that years of hard work vanished in a short amount of time as businesses leave the city. The A's will soon join a growing list of businesses that have left the Hagenberger Road area. The team admits the move will result in job losses. We don't necessarily want to call it an um, a economic yeah. desert. Yeah. But it's it starting to look that way. Lifelong East Oakland resident Charles Johnson says it's more economic pain for some of his neighbors who work as concession workers at the Coliseum. It is an absolute frustration and it even goes to, at times, a level of anger. This was how the Hagenberger Shopping Center looked eight years ago. Hustle and bustle, a lot of shoppers and a lot of cars. The parking lot was always full on game days. But the business corridor has seen a decline in recent years that started with the departure of Walmart in 20... Wait, 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 Walmart left? Okay, somebody said it in the chat. They said the Raiders left. The Warriors left, the Athletics left, and Walmart left. Everybody left? Wait, 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 wait. I knew it was tough over in Oakland. I didn't know that it was basically becoming uninhabitable. Y'all don't even got the Walmart over there no more? Sheesh. I know the, lead, though, the Raiders been left. But I'm just saying, like, is Oakland just completely abandoned? So why are they focusing so much on all of these other cities if Oakland is over there suffering like this? Oh, man. I didn't know that everything was gone. Jesus Christ. If you over there in Oakland, get out. Get out. If you over in Oakland, run. Get out. Get out while you, stay, while you still have the ability to get some value out of your home. Get the heck out of Oakland if that's what's going on. I didn't know that it was like this. Even Keith Lee left early. Good God. 2016, and the pace of closure sped up in the last 12 months. Look at that. Two Starbucks, a Subway, an In-N-Out, a Denny's, and a Black Bear Diner. And two restaurants have closed their dining rooms to do drive through only because of car break-ins. This is how the Hagenberger Shopping Center looks now. Very quiet and fences in the parking lot to prevent people from doing donuts. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> Very quiet and fences in the parking lot to prevent people from doing donuts. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And fences in the parking lot to prevent people from doing donuts. Hey, and this is what it looks like in the Oakland parking lot today. There's fences in the parking lot and it's preventing people from doing donuts. Boy, get some bass in your voice. <laughs> Yo, y'all need Batman over there in Oakland too? Superman? Hey, what kind of super? Aquaman? Ain't no water over here in Oakland? Okay, so we're not going to go with Aquaman. Y'all need Superwoman? What? Wonder Woman? What is going on over in Oakland? Hey, we got anybody from Oakland in the chat? Y'all need to let me know what's going on over there in these streets. I was thinking about going and doing a tour over in Oakland. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I may be getting myself into something that I may not be able to get myself out of. I have to be careful. I'm too precious to be over in Oakland. <laughs> Patreon meetup in Oakland canceled. Uh, can you make sure you scratch Oakland off the list for any meetup locations? Thank you, please. We're going to go to another location. If you are a bag chaser over in Oakland, you're going to have to drive a little bit in order to get over to the next city. Okay? All right. It's so sad. Like, I would always go to the Denny's around here. You look at it today, 
They are leaving here like the city's on fire. <laughs> Axeful Gospel Church is located near the Coliseum. Bishop Bob Jackson says it took decades to bring economic vitality to the Hagenberger Corridor. While the A's are leaving over a different reason, the result is the same. Fewer tax dollars and fewer jobs for people in East Oakland. Just helping crime to escalate even more because without the jobs, without making the money, what are you going to do? How are you going to live? So crime seems to be the only thing that's working mm, in the city of Oakland. Neighbors believe it may take many years to revitalize the Hagenberger area. The crime for sure. Yeah, even like, especially as a woman, like a younger woman, coming to the gym here, it's scary. Like, I like make extra sure I lock my car. Like, I look always. Like, it's scary. Charles says the city has to improve public safety or more businesses will continue to leave. Who's the mayor of Oakland? Let me pull up this mayor real quick. See what's going on over there in Oakland. Oakland mayor. Oh, Shang, Shang Tsung. I forgot about Shang Tsung. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the, let me tell you something. Although I think that Shang Tsung may not be that great of a mayor. Let me show y'all who Shang Tsung is. This is Shang Tsung. This is the mayor of Oakland. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah, Shang Tsung is the mayor of Oakland. Another female diversity, equity, and inclusion mayor out here running the city into the ground. And although I don't necessarily agree with Shang Tsung, um, I will say that it's over. It's over. And you know what the worst part about it is? Again, I say this all the time. We already experienced this. We experienced this in Detroit. Thank God that we moving in a different direction. But y'all going to learn today. Y'all going to learn today. Y'all thought that y'all was just going to be out here doing what you want to do when you want to do it. Nope. You going to learn today. You are definitely going to find out the hard way. So shout out to Oakland. We praying for y'all from a distance. We praying for y'all from a distance. We not even going to sit here and go back and forth with y'all. Y'all go ahead and stay where y'all at. As a matter of fact, don't even run. Don't leave. Don't run for the hills. None of that. The A's left. When Steph Curry left, I said, I'm not even going to visit because it ain't even no point in me going to see what's going on there. Shout out to my dog, Ash. Ash says, AD, Oakland A's are not the only professional team leaving a major city. Rumors have it the Chicago Bears have been is planning an escape from Soldier's Field and out of Chicago to a distant suburb. Ooh. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that the abysmal Bears, I mean the Chicago Bears, have been thinking about leaving the city for a long time? See, y'all can't even hold the, the Lions accountable no more. <laughs> they can't hold the Lions accountable no more, Ash. Jesus. Shout out to Rodlet Zetrin. Shout out to you. I appreciate you for holding me down, my friend. Thank you for continuing to support the platform. Uh, let's continue throughout the show. I'm going to be reading Super Chats throughout the show. Thank you to everybody that support the platform. Uh, Biden. Biden. He got a new plan. Hey, isn't it interesting that all of this stuff starts to take place during the election year? Election 2024. Make sure you vote in November. I was listening to the women on The View. And it was going in on uh, The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. And they said, you know, more celebrities need to be using their platform in order to get young people to the, vote, to the polls and to vote. And I was like, didn't we do that during the voter die years with Diddy and, and Chameleon Air and all of them? And it was Harlem shaking and trying to get y'all to vote, vote or die, vote or die, make sure y'all vote for Obama and all of these people. Didn't we do that already? Didn't we do this? Did, have, not, have we not been through this whole spiel over and over again? Y'all been Harlem shaking and voter die and make sure that you go with this person and that person. Ain't nobody trying to actually understand no policies. Just dancing and voting. Dancing and voting. Making sure that your favorite rapper, your favorite content creator can go out here and get you out to the polls. Just dancing and voting. Harlem shaking your way to the polls. I heard G. Depp just got out of prison. I wonder what he going to say about Diddy this time. Anyways, uh, move, moving on, moving on. So, Biden got a new plan. 
in order to get you guys to vote, all right? But here's the sentiment. Here's the problem. There's a lot of black people that's now saying that, hey, we volunteer as tribute in order to give our, our explanation as to what we think is going on and whether or not we want to go over here and vote for Biden. Take a look. And President Biden headed to Wisconsin today where he's expected to announce new plans to cancel student debt for Shout tens of millions of Americans. Madeline Rivera has more. Maddie. Hey, good morning, Todd. The Biden administration says their new plan would provide debt relief for more than 30 million Americans when combined with actions they've already taken to cancel student debt. Under this new initiative, people who now owe more than they initially borrowed could see up to $20,000 in interest wiped out. The administration believes about 25 million Americans fall under this category. About 2 million borrowers who are eligible for loan forgiveness programs but have not applied you, could Rob. see their balances automatically forgiven. Take all right, so let me tell y'all what the plan is. This is Biden's new plan, all right? He wants to cancel not the principal, not the loan itself, but he wants more bailouts, all right? And here's the bailouts. Cancel $20,000 in interest for millions of, of Americans, up to $20,000 in interest. Listen, he's willing to sell you guys short. Shout out to Tyrone. I'm definitely going to be reading that Super Chat shortly. He willing to sell y'all short and sell out the United States of America and all of the taxpayers. Because you got to remember, think about this for a second. Somebody is paying for this, and it ain't him. It ain't Hunter Biden. It ain't Cam Cam, Kamala Harris. Somebody is going to pay for this. Now, when you think about whose pocket that this is going to come out of, whose pocket do you think it's going to come out of? You. So every single person that decided that they wanted to go out here and not do the thing that was best for themselves and a mortgage their future for their personal right now when they was out here buying Timberlands and partying on campus and doing what they wanted to do and taking trips and being hot girls and hot boys. They came back and they said, oh, my God. <laughs> We didn't know what we was doing. We'll vote blue if you guys continue to cancel student loans. I will give Biden this. I will give Biden one thing. He definitely is executing on exactly what he said that he wanted to do and trying to cancel y'all student loans in order to get y'all to vote in a certain way. I have to give him credit. I have to give him credit. Whatever the reason is that he's doing it, he's doing it. And he said we want to forgive $20,000 in interest for millions automatically cancel debt for borrowers eligible but have not applied you don't even have to apply they just want to send you a letter and say hey vote for us we canceled your student loans we canceled your student loans they said borrowers entering, re entering repayment over the next 20 years for undergrad and 25 plus years for grad students borrowers with hardships and daily lives in daily lives. Yo, I might as well. I should have took out some student loans. I might as well. I should have got me some free money. That ain't it, don't it feel like if you do it the right way, then you always the ones that catch the bad end of the stick? How come the good people got to always suffer and pay for the bad people? Not only do we not get it, but then on top of it, we then got to fund it for other people and we didn't even do it. If you were studying, you held it down, and you took care of business, and you was on top of things, guess what? You are now going to be your brother's keeper whether you want to or not. You have to pay for those that decided that they wanted to party. So you was turning it in and making sure you was on time, and you took care of your business, and you was going to class, and you were studying when everybody else was partying. And guess what? Now you got to pay. You got to pay for somebody else's interest, whether they apply for it or not. Mm, mm, mm. Take a listen to what administration officials have to say. If these plans are finalized as proposed, altogether this administration will begin to cancel up to $20,000 in interest for millions of borrowers 
and full loan forgiveness for millions more this fall. President Biden will use every tool available to cancel student loan debt for as many borrowers as possible, no matter how many times Republican elected officials try to stand in his way. The White House says it's canceled $146 billion in student debt relief for 4 million Americans, even though the Supreme Court struck down the president's sweeping forgiveness plan last year. They believe, though, this proposal will stand up to legal challenges because it targets specific categories of borrowers through the Higher Education Act. Pro local reports, President Biden is also expected to head to a Chicago fundraiser, which is expected to raise $2.5 million. Todd. Ooh, shout out to Chicago. Brandon Johnson going to be hosting them. We're going to get to that shortly. Madeline Rivera live for us this morning. Maddie, thank you. With that, let us you bring in Daniel Gadala, who lives in Wisconsin, and Kata Truss, who is a Chicago resident. Thanks to the both of you for being here. Daniel, I'll begin with you. Look, the president's seen the polls, I'm sure. It shows him not doing very well in the swing states that he needs to win in order to become an, uh, another a president for a second term. So he's headed to Madison. It's a college town. He's going to try to tell the young people who he's bleeding votes with as well that, hey, I'm going to pay off your college loans. As a Do y'all see the finesse? Do y'all see the finesse? He's using the executive branch, absolute power, to pander for votes. He's using the executive branch and absolute power to pander for votes. He's going to Milwaukee. He's going to Chicago. He's holding fundraisers at college campuses. And he's saying, hey, guys, ha, who you want? Me that's going to give you this free money or him downstairs? He's using this as an opportunity. Man, listen, bro. Listen. This is disrespectful to democracy. This is disrespectful towards democracy. Let me see what the people got to say, and then they're going to go over to the black people, I believe. Taxpayer, how excited are you to pay off somebody else's college loans? Yeah, not very excited. Thanks, Todd, for having me. Um, you know, with somebody who has a high school, or a high school student, he'll be graduating this, this spring and heading to college next fall, I'd like to see what the president is doing to ensure that students going forward are getting a good deal when it comes to student loans rather than taking taxpayer dollars now and giving out another government handout. Um, if there's an issue with the system, then let's find ways to fix it so that we can, you know, ensure that our future generation is getting the type of education that they need to enter the workforce with a solid set of skills. Uh, but more government handout isn't going to help and certainly it isn't going to help our inflation issue. And there's also the sense that, hey, I'm the president. I can ignore what the Supreme Court says. That's a topic for a different day. Kata, here is what some black Chicago voters are saying about Joe Biden and how he matches up with Donald Trump. This was just a couple of months ago. Listen. Who do you think is better for the country, Trump or Biden? Trump. 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 I say Trump. Why do you say that? He's a businessman. He's going to think business. And Biden is a racist. No wars. Great policies. Best years in the... I wasn't expecting that last part. Stock market. What do you think has done more for the black community, Trump or Biden? I ain't even see Biden yet. I know Trump was out of... Biden, that's... <laughs> everything. <laughs> Biden ain't doing... We're going to get rid of his... Sweet... Well, I don't get the sense that those Chicago voters will be excited that Joe Biden's visiting their great city today. Do you agree with those sentiments you just heard, Kata? I do agree with those sentiments. And, you know, we're not really excited about Biden coming to Chicago. We know that he is coming here for a fundraiser. But I know that it is on the top of my mayor's uh, agenda to ask uh, the Biden administration to uh, allow there to be a release of work visas for the migrants. I also know that he is looking for more funding um, from the federal government to help support and house migrants, even though he was recently heard saying that there is enough here in Chicago to support them. Interesting. Uh, I think that you would probably disagree with a lot of that. So instead of coming to your city to raise money for himself, what would you rather see President Biden do with regard to your money, your financial situation, the issues that matter to you? 
I would rather see him come here to talk about the state of the economy, the fact that everything is higher, groceries is higher, gas is higher, the interest rates are higher. I need Biden to talk about those things, those things that affect everyday Americans. That's what we want to hear him talk about, the fact that the unemployment rate among blacks here in the city of Chicago is at its highest. Those are things that we want to hear discussed. Why is unemployment so high in Chicago for black people? I'm just just curious. Why why is unemployment in Chicago? Chicago and I, I'm not even I ain't even gotten to the work visas yet because that's coming in the very next segment of the show. Thank you, Adrian, says Stock Club was informative. Yeah, it was a lot of game and that wasn't. If y'all not a part of the Patreon, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. And go and view the last video or the last live stream, which was re-uploaded as a video, for you guys to be able to tap into in order for y'all to be able to get that money and get that back so you ain't looking dusty-dusty like you in Oakland and Chicago. Why is there a, 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 a huge unemployment rate for black people in Chicago? I know that it's going to be some blackity blacks that say, oh, my God, Anton, because it's systemic. It's systemic. It's the white man's fault. It's the white woman's fault. It's the system. They're against us. They want to hold us down. They want to prevent us from being great out here in these streets. It's the man. It's the white man. It's the white man, the H-W-Y-T-E man. It's the white man. Just wondering. Honestly, I'm, I'm seriously curious. Why is the unemployment rate so high in Chicago? Is it that there aren't enough jobs? Is there underemployment? Everybody getting guns. Everybody getting that, getting that money. Chicago is spending a whole lot of money. Why are all of the liberal cities falling and crumbling? Why is the cities that's the bluest, Chicago, high unemployment, money is running out, Houston said that they broke, Oakland is over there, they ain't got no team no more, they ain't got a team. Not one team, a team. And then, Chicago. Yeah, and then have him take action on him, not just talk about him. Uh, finally, to you, Daniel, this Wall Street Journal poll showing President Biden and former President Trump tied in Wisconsin at 46 percent. No matter the poll, Wisconsin is basically a toss up between Biden and Trump. So what's the main issue in your state that you think is going to tip the balance between one of those two candidates? I think it's got to be inflation and how how is uh, President Biden and or uh, you know, uh, former President Trump going to address the inflation issues that are really hitting a lot of families um, here very hard, especially small businesses? Uh, you know, recently, my wife actually had to close a fitness studio that uh, she owned after six years because of rent prices going up so high and because her clients just didn't have at the disposable income necessary in order to, you know, continue their health and fitness journey. And, uh, and you know, we really have to find ways to address this. And, uh, you know, we're, look, we're looking to the candidates to uh, present their plan. I think that's going to be a, a big uh, swing opportunity in this state. Somebody said they're cool technical jobs, learning and trades, the backup is not cool. Um, we're going to address that. We're going to address, address colleges versus trades. We're going to address Dave Ramsey. We're going to address a lot of things uh, throughout this show. Is Wisconsin really a swing state? It's a lot going on out here in these streets. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. That's the new pitch. The new, the new Build Back Better plan. The new BBB plan. Shout out to, to Biden and a new plan um, to get it and run it up. Jay Johnson is in the building. Shout out to Jay Johnson. AD Oakland really liked that. I lived here for a good while. Trust. You can't even walk down the street at night sometimes. KFC has bulletproof, bulletproof glass 
on MacArthur Ave with two security guards. It's a tough city. Jesus. It's supposed to be good weather over there in Oakland. And a lot of pimps. P. Shank says, good morning, Mr. Daniels and the Millionaire Morning Show. Shout out to P. Shank. We love you, baby. Uh, Rod. Shout out to Rod. Says, been watching you for months. I recently became a bag chaser. Keep up the amazing work. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Rod. I appreciate you. Tyrone, you better call Tyrone. Tyrone says, shout out to your growth, AD. Don't question yourself. Question the people that keep sending you negative information. They may be the ones doing the talking and want your attention for their channel. I'm late on it, though. We ain't, we ain't entertaining nothing. We ain't entertaining nothing. If it ain't about running up a bag or furthering the message that we trying to push, we not entertaining nothing. And this is what I need y'all to do before I read this next super chat. This is what I want y'all to do. I want y'all to keep me focused. This is my ask of you. I don't ask much of you guys. The only thing I ask y'all to do in most instances is to do the thing that's in your own best interest. This is what I ask of you guys, all right? Before I go into my 42nd birthday, and my 42nd birthday is, because I've been with you guys for a while, and we've been, we've been really, really pushing and growing and, I don't think that we growing as fast as we could grow as far as taking care of business and being on top of things. That self-growth, that personal growth. Forget the channel. The channel going to do what the channel do. I'm talking about professionally. The same way that I hold y'all accountable, I need y'all to keep me on a straight and narrow because I'm going to be honest with you. I can get distracted. I can get distracted. I wear my emotions on my sleeve. I wear my emotions on my sleeve, y'all. Meaning a lot of times I get passionate about the things that's really meaningful in my life. And so a lot of times that emotion can spill over because everybody got emotions, but you got to be able to harness it. You got to control it and you got to channel it towards the right things. So this is what I'm asking for you guys to do. When you see me starting to go dark and I'm not talking about a debate, I'm not talking about going on different platforms. I'm not talking about stuff that could be reaching a different audience. I'm talking about picking on a low hanging fruit and entertaining conversations. That's not a, not where we going or is above us. or we've already graduated past that. I want y'all to say, yo, Anton, cut it out. Anton, cut it out. Anton, cut it out. I just did a live stream on Patreon last night. It was so much. It was literally millions of dollars a game in a Patreon. I ain't. Come on, man. Anton, cut it out. Nobody put out more content than me. That's a fact. But when it comes to being above the BS, if it ain't about pure entertainment, if I if I decide to start going dark and y'all see me about to do a little crazy live stream, hold me accountable. Email me. Tap in with me. DM me. Anton, cut it out. We above that. We grown, grown over here. We going to run it up. We taking care of business. And we on top of things. That's my ask of you. Hold me down. Hold me down. Don't let me crash out. I'm not going to let y'all crash out. You don't let me crash out. Let's stay on top of it. All right? Let's keep this good energy. Stay focused. Let's build each other up. And let's continue to hold each other down. Uh, Joe Gunn, 84, says, come see us, Anton. You can stay at the Claremont Hotel and spa. Berkeley Hills is safe over there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Sean B. says, what's up, Antron? I want to book a session. I've hit a wall as far as growing on my own. I need the necessary guidance to keep me on the path to unlock my potential. You're the only true representation of what I want for myself. Shout out to Sean B. Hey, Sean B. Email me. Email me. AntonDaniels413 at gmail.com. AntonDaniels413 at gmail.com. Email me. We're going to get you hooked up, big dog. I promise you we're going to get you hooked up. Shout out to Sean B. for the continuous growth. And shout out to all of the chasers. <laughs> I am Tactical Trucker says the Bears are staying updating the stadium with a dome. We got to pay for we got to pay people. We got to pay for people with one hundred twenty thousand dollars in debt with a degree in basket weaving. Yup. 
Yep. Yep, that's basically what it is. Michael Anderson says, Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. It's self-inflicted wounds and ignorance. Um, Hero and Hooligan says, Biden hurts the country. Trump only hurts feelings. Ah, I like that. That's dope. AP Funday says, Anton, you said exactly what I was thinking about. Co-apology. I see. Um, no, you're on another frequency mentally. It's bigger than rap. Bigger than that. Enforcer 2K9 says, when will black folks ever overcome white supremacy? <laughs> when they decide that they don't want to be a part of um, running in the victim Olympics. The only supremacy that you have, in my opinion, is the supremacy and the limits of your own mind. I always wondered this. I always said to myself, if God is for you and if God is above your life and if God is controlling what goes on in your life, and the only thing that you, and this is for the believers, right? Because I see a lot of people that is in church and they say that they're Christians and all of that. If God is the head of your life, then how can some random white man control your fate? That's weird to me. How can you be a believer and unbeliever at the same time? I don't understand that. I genuinely don't understand that. Shout out to the gray way. The gray way says, Anton, cut it out. Just checking. <laughs> Early riser says, AD, consider Milwaukee for a meetup. Uh, Republican National Convention is here in July. I actually love Milwaukee. I love, when is the Kentucky Derby, Miss Jennifer? Tell me when the Kentucky Derby is and then I'll tell you if I'm going to be there. Matter of fact, let's look it up. The Kentucky Derby. Kentucky. Kentucky Derby. I was just in Kentucky. Or uh, Louisville, anyways. Kentucky Derby is Saturday, May 4th. Why not? Why not? Is Secretariat going to be there? Is Secretariat going to be there? From 1973, shout out to uh, Secretariat. I might have to go to the Kentucky Derby. I've never been to the Kentucky Derby. That may be a thing. Kentucky Derby, that may be popping. Shout out to Kentucky. Last but not least, before we move on to the show, JP says, uh, forgiving student debt will raise college tuition, basically saying charge whatever you want. You can get whatever you like. Um, charge whatever you want. We will pay the price. Manor says it must be to teach because you don't look for the two. Ooh, we. That's these women that's keeping me young. Whenever you keep some soft ladies around you instead of hanging out with all of these hard legs, you're going to start to, it's a vibe. All right, Miss Jennifer. All right, Miss Jennifer. You said I got to put on my pinstripes and my hat. Tip it to the ladies. All right. I don't have no problem. I got some nice clothes and shattered my closet. Uh, and I will definitely be bringing out my Gucci loafers. All right, y'all. Let's move over. Let's move over. We got to get to the rest of the show. Uh, Chicago. All right. Mayor Brandon Johnson is advocating for work permits for migrants, for undocumented workers. Jay Jones, what you waiting on? Get into the chasers. <laughs> You're not a part of the Patreon. The link is in the description. Don't be watching me every day talking about it. I'm thinking about it. Well, don't think about it. Go and get it. Go and get it. Rita got a whole lot of hats. TGG. She got a whole lot of hats. All right, y'all. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. This is Mayor Johnson's update on his ass from Biden, considering that Biden is about to be showing up in Chicago for a fundraiser. The mayor is pushing the Biden administration to extend work permits to undocumented workers. Mayor Johnson held a roundtable discussion earlier today at the Chicago Urban League. He says the move would help address labor shortages and improve working conditions for all workers. He also mentioned the city will never turn their back on those migrants in need. I want to make this emphatically clear. Chicago will never turn its back on people who wish to call the city of Chicago their home. We will always be a welcoming city. Illinois workers contribute more than a billion dollars in taxes and is home to more than 480,000 long-term undocumented residents. 
480,000 long-term undocumented residents. Are you meaning to say illegal migrants? Don't talk to me about all of this word salad, these undocumented residents. Anything above three syllables, I'm not really talking about it. Anything above three syllables, we don't even have to undocumented. Undocumented. <laughs> undocumented undocumented anything above three syllables i don't want to hear about it you talking about illegal that's only three illegal migrants <laughs> oh let's be emphatically clear i want to make this emphatically clear crystal emphatically chicago will never turn its back on people that are in need, regardless as if you have documentation or not. All right, well, give us a little bit more, Brandon Johnson. Help us understand why you refuse to turn your back on people that's here illegally. First here at 430, Mayor Brandon Johnson wants President Biden to issue more work permits for migrants. Nearly 10,000. Somebody said he's not going to be mayor much longer. I live in Chicago. Oh, yes, he is. He just got elected. Do y'all know that Brandon Johnson hasn't even been in office for one year? He has not even been in office for one whole year. Y'all got at least three and a half minimum. And I have a strong, strong sense that y'all going to have a short memory and y'all going to revote him back in office right after that. Because he ain't doing nothing no different than he said that he was going to do in the first place. Now y'all just getting confused about it because you didn't listen to the entire message when you elected him. Y'all got at least three and a half more years of him. Minimum. Minimum. So don't y'all sit here talking about, oh, Mayor Brandon Johnson is not going to be reelected. He don't need to be. He got three more years, three and a half more years of rain on your head. Man, who is this chocolate sister? I turn around. I'm over here correcting y'all. Telling y'all what's going on, and then I look over here and I see this chocolate sister, this tall drink of chocolate milk on my screen. <laughs> got her cleavage, got the microphone in her cleavage. Listen, don't y'all sit here and tell me not to admire these beautiful women. Anton is married. He always got some chicks that he talking about. Listen, I am in, in awe and admiration. You know, listen. We talk about these chicks in Miami. I, it's a couple of these newscasters over in New York, but I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to be absolutely, positively honest with y'all. Honestly, this is the honest to God truth. I got a thing for the chocolate. I got a thing for chocolate. I'm not going to even lie to you. I got a thing for chocolate. There is nothing like darkness. There is nothing like darkness. Honestly, that is that is my thing. The chocolate. Whew, I like that chocolate. I like dark fruit. I like dark fruit. I love blueberries. Blackberries. Blackberries. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why God made me get married early. He said, you go ahead and get married early. You're a mess over there, Anton. We got to pre preserve you so that we can get you over there to talk on the Millionaire Morning Show. You don't even know that it's going to be a Millionaire Morning Show. Go ahead and get married early. I love that chocolate. I ain't going to lie to you. When you pull up next to that bumper, when you get in bed at night and you pull up next to that bumper and that woman is all soft and chocolatey and oily because they just got all of their minerals and oils on them and stuff like that and the breath be smelling good i said oh my god god bless you <laughs> oh my god what is going on in my life god bless god bless you got that right i'm married i ain't blind i'm married i ain't blind Everybody, all y'all boyfriends and y'all husbands keep doing like this. I be like this.
And people are now living in Chicago shelters and more than 38,000 have come to the city since the buses started arriving from the southern border. But as Christian Farr explains, the undocumented people who've been here even longer say they need help too. We but you know are... what? No, no, before I get over to Mary Johnson, let me see something. Yeah, she's probably a little older. She's probably a little older. You know how you can tell whether a woman is older? It's three ways. It's three ways. It's not always by optics just the stuff that's on the surface you got to look for the details now a couple of ways i've already told y'all elbows knees elbows knees she got knees like an elephant she got knees like an elephant yeah she got a little seasoning on that a little seasoning on that salmon you know what i'm saying a little yeah she's still like i still like her i still like her she got a little seasoning but it's also the neck it's also the neck. Elbows, knees, and the neck. All right? They don't make, I don't think they make Botox for your neck yet. Yeah. You can always look at the neck. Mm-hmm. No matter what. Look at her elbows, her knees, and her neck. If the neck is a little bit more elastic than usual, that's a sign. She a little seasoned. She take care of herself, but she got some seasoning on her. You can't have that neck, though. Can't have that neck, though. Mm-hmm. Yep, I looked at the neck, and the neck told me her real age. Because, you know, a woman's neck is like a tree. A woman's neck is like a tree. When you, when you cut open a tree, you know, or the tree falls, and you look at all of the rings in order to try to figure out how old that tree is, that's the same thing with a woman's neck. You can tell a woman's age. Let me count the rings on your neck. Oh, I see how old you are. You're, you're, you're a little seasoned. You got some seasoning on your, on your salmon. Okay, all right. Anyways, let's get into it. I don't want to get too distracted. You know I can go on these little rants and soliloquies and it go left. I want to stay focused. This woman is a nice-looking woman. It's a little seasoning on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wrong with see, Getting older is a blessing. Getting older is a blessing. Y'all keep acting like it's a bad thing. No, getting older is a blessing. Some people never made it to get that old. You know what I'm saying? Let's continue. Chicago, Brandon Johnson, illegal undocumented migrants. Let's continue. We've been here even longer. Say they need help too. We are in solidarity with our long-term migrants at the Chicago Urban League headquarters in Bronzeville. My parents have also been living undocumented for the past 22 years. A large group of community leaders joined Mayor Brandon Johnson in an effort to secure legal work permits for nearly a half a million undocumented Chicago residents. Mariana Gutierrez has been undocumented since coming to the U.S. with her parents at... Oh, see, you always want to distract me. Anton always bashing women. And what part of that rant that I just did did you see me bash any woman? As a matter of fact, I celebrated them. I said, listen, it ain't nothing wrong with a little seasoning on that salmon. How did I bash a woman? Because I said that you can tell how old the woman is by their neck. I said that the woman was beautiful. Somebody, uh, don't, don't banner for life. Somebody teach Faith a lesson. One of the moderators, can you, can you please time Faith out for a little while, please? Let her sit with her thoughts and let her think about what she's saying before she say it. Somebody get Lady Faith uh, some act right, please. Somebody time out Faith. Don't, don't ban her. Don't ban her. Just let her think about her thoughts while she's trying to type in the chat all hard. Faith, you're going to get your life together. Stop being so easily offended. How old is your neck, Faith? All right, let's continue. <sighs> always want to get me distracted. Seven months old. I'm urging President Biden to use his executive power and grant my, me, my parents, and everyone else in our community work permits in order for us to work and have good paying jobs. That was the message that everyone tried to deliver during this roundtable discussion, securing work permits for the thousands of migrants who have come to Chicago since 2022 has been a core issue for many in recent months. Easy. 
but the undocumented who have been in Chicago for decades want the same consideration and the mayor agrees. We're going to continue to do our part and as I lead in this moment to know that there are a company of witnesses all over the country and quite frankly all over the world that are that are hopeful in this moment. The mayor says he is sending a letter to President Biden to push for these work permits at the federal level. And his administration says support for this effort goes well beyond the city of Chicago. We are sending it through the Cities for Action Network and it will go to over 300 cities asking them to sign on for these work permits. The mayor says he's already received support for his letter from city leaders in New York, Seattle, Boston and San Francisco. In Streeterville, Christian. All of these same liberal spaces and liberal cities, of course they're going to say it. What did he say? Seattle, Boston. You're talking about the same Boston that was holding a bunch of, uh, hot, holding a bunch of migrants overnight inside of the Boston airport and then getting them out of there in the daytime so that the people in the news wouldn't be able to spot them. You're talking about that same Boston? You're talking about Seattle where they stage in a city in at a school playground and, and all of the tennis courts saying that y'all better give us housing and hotels before we continue to take over these schools. You're talking about that same Seattle? You're talking about New York where Eric Adams is literally running the whole city into the ground? So you got a bunch of cities as basically sanctuary cities that signed on and said that we want to give undocumented workers the permission to be able to make money inside of the country and send it back to their people when we don't even know where they're from. And they're holding Biden accountable to do that because they said that Biden, we held up our end of the bargain. We held up our end of the bargain, and so we, we, we want you to do the same thing. Talking about those same people? Interesting. Far, NBC5 News. Okay, okay uh, good morning. Good afternoon, Island Gal Q. Are y'all tuning in to Monday night? It's going to be lit tonight. It's going to be lit tonight. Island Gal Q. We're going to be on Monday night on the Anton Dangles channel. If y'all not subscribed in order to be able to get your notifications, make sure you do so. It's going to be popping tonight. And I don't even know who's going to be there. Good morning, Mr. Minger. I'm just wondering how you're feeling about what the president can do or will do. Because this isn't the first time there's been a call for work permits or to expedite this process. Um, there's a lot on his plate, a lot of criticism on his plate right now. Yeah. Um, your thoughts about actually getting this done? Well, we're encouraged. Um, you know, I, I'm always going to feel encouraged. Maybe it's because of my birth order, I'm a middle child. <laughs> Maybe I should just start answering for Brandon Johnson. You know, we're encouraged. And. Maybe it's because, you know, of my birth, my birth order. Uh, I'm a middle child, like J. Cole. <laughs> <laughs> and Chicago will never leave migrants behind. Under no circumstances will we leave any person behind over in Chicago. Um, so it's natural, you know, but, you know, look, I'll be very humbly vulnerable. Um, you know, especially as we mark and commemorate the life and legacy of Dr. King. The scriptures remind us not to become weary in our well-doing. Uh-oh. And that, you Did know, you our support faith this with scripture? Our commitment in humanity um, doesn't end because there's pushback or there's delay. Now, of course, the ideal situation would be for the, for Congress to actually do its part and to pass meaningful, substantive immigration reform um, transformation of which the President of the United States is committed to as well as the Senate. Uh, but Donald Trump has put his foot on the necks of Republicans and have told them to block substantive transformation. The last time that this occurred, of course, I mentioned earlier I was in high school, and before that the Bears What's were up, Mika? Super Bowl champions. Mika and Q, I'm surrounded by some of the most beautiful women on the face of this earth, and they both feisty. They both feisty. Shout out in their own special ways. In their own special ways, but I love them both. I love them both. So we're encouraged and we're going to continue to do our part. And as I lead in this moment to know that there are a company of witnesses all over the country and quite frankly, all over the world that are that are hopeful in this moment. And so um, the, the cities, that, of course, that we've reached out to, um, we're, we fully anticipate them to, to join in this effort as well, 
And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to push the president to, to support the families that, quite frankly, need it and who are already contributing to society. Have you looked at if there is there a workaround? Is there anything the city could do? I mean, look, we're, we're going to continue to do our part, right? This is um, an international global crisis, as I indicated, and that it is unprecedented uh, for a local body, a local municipality, to hold such a mission. It's unprecedented. So we're going to continue to bring people together and push the federal government to do its part. Mayor, given the lack of action, given the lack of action. How come he never ask, answer questions that's asked to him? They said, is it a workaround? Is it something that the city could do? He said, you know... He never actually answered the question. At the federal like, level, will you be open to the possibility of pushing state legislators in Illinois to push for legislation that will grant work permits in the state to migrants and other immigrants? Is that something that you would support or help? Well, we've, that's, that's a good question. Look, I've had, we've had conversations of, of sort. Um, there, there could be an opportunity there, you know, but again, this does not, you know, preclude the federal government from doing what it's, you know, authority. Are you in the local government, especially on the state level, going to work towards pushing to get these people to be able to work inside of the United States of America and specifically in Illinois and Chicago? Yes or no? We're not talking about the federal government. The question was regarding local politics and on the state level and on the city level. This is not a federal government conversation or question that they ask. Please. Um, is allowed to do. So um, whether or not the state intervenes and pushes for something uh, that could get us you know, closer towards um, economic security for, for families, um, absolutely, I would be open to that conversation. Now, you, talk, you talk a lot about organizing today, and uh, you know, there's a classic phrase, power concedes nothing without a demand. You've made this demand a couple times, uh, but the federal government hasn't bought yet. Uh, what changes this time? What are you willing to do to add pressure on the federal government to help the city as you want to? Well, the organizing continues to grow. I mean, as you know, what was expressed today, I mean, this is not you know, just for a particular region. This is a global dynamic, right? And so this is affecting black, brown, Asian families around the world. Um, you what may about be them good white people? <laughs> Everybody affected. White people, black people, all people, American people, everybody is being affected. Don't leave out the hook, white folks. That the European Union white people, if y'all voted for Brandon Johnson in, in the state of Chicago, Y'all should be absolutely disgusted from being diversity, equity, and inclusion and out of this answer. If any white person in Chicago is watching this right now, you should be absolutely disgusted, disgusted after being diversity, equity, and inclusion out of this answer. Y'all affected too? And it took them five years to come up with a regional plan um, to address um, global population shift. You know, so, you know, the difference is, is that today is a new day. You know, right? I mean, if, if our ancestors would have taken this model that somehow if no, you demand brother. something and nothing happens that day, you should stop, we would not have the company that we have today. So thank you for that. That's right. That's right. Hey, Mary, thanks so much for doing this Q&A. Can you tell me a little bit more about this letter that you alluded to in your remarks earlier? Um, and can you also speak to whether you've talked with Governor Pritzker about this? Where does he stand on this? What could he do as you know, head of the state on this issue? Well, I mean, look, the letter is, is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we're, we're <laughs> work authorization is what we need. It's, it's simple. I mean, it's, look, these families are finding ways to, to stretch ends to make them meet. What we're just simply saying is that people should not have to duck and hide to contribute, you know, to society. We're talking about trillions of dollars of investment um, as a result of the, the, the growth of our population, of which we have room. You know, I know the, the governor has. Is that the play to bring in more migrants so that they can circulate the dollars and generate more revenue from a tax perspective? Are they looking at these people as numbers or are they looking at these people as individuals? Because he's saying that they're looking at them as individuals, but then they're saying that, they, listen, 
This could actually spur economic growth and more money that goes into the coffers of Chicago and the cities that label themselves sanctuary cities by growing the population. So is the goal or is the finesse actually get more people into the city and then ultimately make sure that they can contribute into the coffers by allowing for them to be able to work and pay taxes, which then fund more initiatives and put more money inside of the city's coffers. Did he just tell us to play? Rewind that for a second. Of which we have room um, as a result of the, the, the growth of our population, of which we have room. You know, I know the, the governor has had oh, some back uh, for a ways to, to stretch ends to make them meet. What we're just simply saying is that people should not have to duck and hide to contribute you know, to society. We're mm. talking about trillions of dollars of investment mm. um, as a result of the, the, the growth of our population, mm -hmm. of which we have room. You know, I know the, the governor has had similar pleas. Uh, we've had you know, roundtables like this before. Um, there is commitment and support around the country. And, you know, look, the, the stories that people express today, you know, a, a young lady who is, you know, studying and, and working, you, Eric. not just studying and working and advocating, that is the strength of this moment. Look, I know what my responsibility is as the mayor of the city of Chicago, as a leader for this country. But the real leaders are those who are on the ground, the organizers, the families that are getting up every... Shut up, man. We're not going to do this today. Let me read some of these Super Chats, and then we're going to get over with the show. Um, I want to get to some other parts of the money. Uh, Chris says, it's overcast, which is kind of a bummer. Shout out to Chris. I appreciate you for supporting the platform. Anton is a whole fool. Not a half a fool, a whole fool. I'm just saying, check the neck, check the knees. Check the elbows. You're going to find out what's going on in these streets. King Stennis says, news channels turning into OF, they be fine. They're taking the blueprint from Anton from AntonDaniels.com. Rod says, love your Brandon Johnson impression. Shout out to Rod. I appreciate you holding me down, Rod. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you are awesome. And then the well-building journey is in the building says, Mayor Johnson, what time is it? As you know, time is relative, so it could be one time. It could be another. But it, uh, we need to use our time wisely to prioritize the migrants uh, to get them work permits, all right, expeditiously. Shout out to my dog, the well-building journey, holding down. You understood the assignment, and you made sure that you held us accountable. All right. I want to get to a couple other things before we get up out of here. First thing that I want to get to is there's an article and a story that's saying that Gen, Gen Zs, Gen Zs, are ditching four-year college degrees for trades, all right? I've been hearing this resonate a lot. People have even been talking about this before I even, you know, stepped on the scene to this show today. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Let's explore. More and more Gen Zers are saying no to four-year colleges and universities and saying yes to traditional trades like welding and plumbing. A new article in the Wall Street Journal explored the reasons behind Gen Z's move to become the quote unquote tool belt generation and how they could be the solution to the shortage of skilled workers in the United States. Queen R says, how can we tell how old men are? Um, by how big our bank account is. <laughs> how, how, how stress free we are. You know, as you get older, you make more money. Not all of us, but some of us. As you get older and you age, you don't even reach a peak earning potential until you get in your late 50s, early 60s. So if you want to evaluate uh, how old, because age for men is really nothing but a number. It's not even a number. You know what I'm saying? We age according to our net worth and our assets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if you want to tell how old a man is, you know, you could tell by the way that he moved what his work ethic is and what his net worth is. His net worth is going to value. It's going to tell you. Ah, that man is he he chilling. He he in he he in his uh <laughs> he in his bag right now. <laughs> That's how you evaluate. Hey, how how old are you? Let me look at my bank account real quick. 
According to my bank account, I'm 96. <laughs> According to my net worth, I'm 96. United States. The author of that piece, Wall Street Journal reporter T. Ping Chen, joins us now to talk about it. This is fascinating. Um, and we've heard in the, it, it's not new. No, there's, I feel like there's been, comes there's up. been spikes yeah. when this has become a thing. Um, but I'm curious, what is it about this particular point in time that has these young people looking more and more at vocational schools and trades? And which are the jobs that you found are the most popular? Yeah. So first of all, college is expensive. It's mm -hmm. been getting more expensive. And for generations, we have had this idea of college for all. That has really been something that, you know, we've we've pushed on a lot of students to think that you've got to go to college. And if you don't, you know, there's no really there's no real alternate path to success. At the same time, we are living in a really uncertain world with the rise of AI, with a tough job market out there for a lot of college grads. We're seeing a lot of employers do things like drop their college education requirements as we face sort of a skills mismatch in this country. At the same time, we're seeing uh, figures like, for example, there was a recent study out by Burning Glass Institute and Strata Education Foundation, which found actually that among college graduates, half of them are actually working in jobs where bachelor's degrees aren't even needed. And so not surprisingly, all that is conspiring to create a feeling of skepticism let me let me break this down for those of you that don't understand it, okay? There are certain industries where you do not need a college degree, but a lot of times people go to college because that's the thing that's expected of them, all right? Nothing wrong with a trade. We're going to get into that in a minute. But the common misconception is two things. Number one, that a, that a college degree, A, has to be expensive. And then B, the other part of it is, that you need a college degree to break into certain industries. I would say that education is always good because education doesn't even say that you can do the job. I talked to uh, a nephew that I've been mentoring, and he's also a person that works for me. And he said, Anton, I finally landed, and I'm finally landed, and I'm on my fourth interview for this particular company, uh, and they saying that it's looking good, and I'm hearing all good feedback or whatever, and I'm going to start off at above a certain number. I'm not going to say what the number is. And he was so excited. And he's only like 21 going on, 22 years old this year. And he's going to be making more. He's going to be making so much freaking money. And he's basically followed the exact same career path as me, except he did it much earlier in life. And he doesn't get the opportunities to even get into these doors, which I was a self-taught software engineer slash web developer and designer. But then I realized, and I actually talked about this years and years and years ago about certain job industries and things like that, that I was not even able to get into certain doors. And even when I got into those doors, based off of my career path and my trajectory of what I thought that I wanted when it came to corporate America and becoming incredibly successful, you can't move up and you can't go into certain areas or arenas if you don't have the backing behind you as far as a college degree. So it depends on the track that you want. Now, if you want to go into African-American studies, an underwater basket weaving degree, history, you want to be a lunch lady, you want to work at a call center, then that's completely different. A lot of times you can't find a job because, or you can't find a job that's closely related to what you studied because what you studied was trash, man. You studied trash. Now, if you want to be an anesthesiologist and you want to make the most money inside of the hospital, then you're going to go down a completely different path. Yes, you're going to need a degree. If you want to become a surgeon, a neurosurgeon, if you want to become a registered nurse, you don't necessarily need college or you may not necessarily need the same type of schooling or college. If you want to become a travel nurse, hey, shout out to the travel nurses. The guys is getting to it. The women is getting buzzed down. That's what I heard. I don't know. I'm, I've never been a travel nurse, but I hear a lot of people saying that they don't want to date travel nurses uh, because they be out here tricking and slicking and licking. <laughs> <laughs> but if you just want to go into some random liberal arts degree or you want to go study opera and then you're working at a call center and you say, well, I didn't even need my degree in order to work in opera. What do you think is going to happen? Of course, of course, of course, of course. And the other part of the conversation is how to minimize the amount of money that you're spending on a degree, depending on what you study. And you also need to go into and study 
something that the industry is going towards, not how you feel, okay? We're always going to need engineers. We're always going to need architects. We're always going to need uh, doctors, and we're always going to need anesthesiologists and cloud infrastructure and 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 every single type of engineer that you can think of. There's a, a a thousand different types of engineers, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, software engineers, so on and so forth. Like there's so many different things that you can go into, but you, you should you should probably go into STEM, right? Anything STEM related, you'll be fine. And that doesn't mean that you have to stop there. You have to continue to refine your skills based off of the industry that you're in so that you can, you know, excel in it and grow in it and, and get a marketable skill and all of this stuff, right? But my point is, is that college is not a scam. That is the biggest misconception. The college that you went to and the degree program that you decided to choose and take out student loans for, you scammed yourself. You scammed yourself. All right? So there's nothing wrong with a trade. There's never been anything wrong with a trade. But to go into something and not get the most out of it because you just wanted a degree but you didn't really understand what it took in order to be successful in certain arenas, then you're going to suffer. Do I need We're to always going to need a dentist. Dentist get to the bag. Dentist get a bag bag. All right? You're always going to need these people. A four-year college to be successful. Do I want to take on that debt? Is it the only path? Are there alternate paths up there? Um, so if you look at some of the figures, at a macro level, we are talking about last year a 16% jump actually in enrollment in vocational focused community colleges and i wish they would separate it i wish they would start to deep dive instead of just saying a college degree it's not just a college degree okay that's the highest um, if you look at overall enrollment it's actually at the highest level since the national student clearing house started tracking this data in 2018. wow that's you right. asked Sorry, go yeah. ahead. No, no this no, is also no. fascinating. Go ahead. <laughs> I was I was going to say you asked about what programs are the most popular. Mm -hmm. if, you look at some of, if you break it down, you can see, for example, with construction trades, that's that's one area that has seen um, a pretty striking jump since in that time period since 2018 of around 23 percent. Likewise, vehicle maintenance and programs in HVAC vehicle maintenance and, and repair and install and all that, it's gone up by 7%. So those are some of the more popular areas. Uh, you know, we're uh, both children of immigrants, right? And I think- and Let me add this also. I think that trades are cool. Trades are awesome. But also take this into consideration. Um, when you go into a trade, and I talk to a lot of the guys that work at or work on, even if you open up a business, a lot of the types of businesses that you open up, um, I was talking to a guy that does excavation. I was talking to an electrician. You know, a lot of them do really well. They make a lot of money. They charge me a lot of money, blah, 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 blah. A lot of times trades, because you have to remember that for most of us, for most of us, we'll be working for the majority of our lives. We'll be working for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, right? Your back get tired. Your back hurts i know plenty of guys that's tired of climbing through this cubby hole and doing this and doing that and so you know they're trying to figure out another way for them to leverage their skill set to maybe open up a business and expand a business and hire other people to do it or whatever right but your back gets tired they make a lot of money but then they can suffer a lot of times also so also remember that right i remember when i was going into Gosh, when I was at the steel mill, I had passed the test and I was going to be a, was it a millwright? Yeah, I think I was going to be a millwright at first before I wound up losing my job and then, you know, going into software engineering. I was going to be a millwright. Yep. And you can't turn off that physical because the physical was how you then pay for your bills and make your money. A lot of people who are children of immigrants experience this thing where, you know, your parents are like, you got to be a doctor or a lawyer. Like, you know, it's got to be this. Mm -hmm. um, and and I remember arguing with my mom and saying, well, maybe I don't want to go to college. Maybe I want to try something different. And it just like could not 
The, her, it was her like, mind cannot not, accept can, that. It was basically you can if you want to be a welder, you can do that after you go to college. Right, basically, <laughs> basically. Uh, so, but I'm curious now if you know the views are changing when people think about the trades, when they think about plumbing, welding, electrical jobs. Um, I Neil, see you, Sabrina. What are the shout out to my dog questions that people have? That's a really good question. So 100%, that stigma still exists, I would say. If you think about, you know, we're, we're living in a society where for generations we have that sense that college is the optimal, right? And anything other than that is less than. Mm -hmm. And not I'll surprisingly, that Catholic. does show up still when we're talking about attitudes, even among, you know, younger workers, Gen Z, et cetera. If you look at survey data, you can see that the strong majority of Gen Z would be interested in vocational schools offering paid I, I don't believe that i think a strong majority of them actually um they just want the money a lot of young people they are lazy they don't want to work they are super lazy hello hey what's up rita this is Anthony. i'm on a i'm on a uh, live i got a question for you how much did we how much did we pay the h the hvac people do you remember what that contract was for the house we just um, I could look at it if you want me to pull it up. Just give me a general idea of how much you think we paid the HVAC people or what the contract was for. 20000 or 30000 one of those. I don't know. Yeah, it was, I think, I think the total was 30000 and we gave them 20000 so far. Oh, it's the next one. What about the electrician? How much did we pay the electrician? If you had to guess. And what about, do you remember what we paid the plumber? I don't. No, I don't. You know about a general idea or how much the plumber plumbing thing was? Turn right onto Barnes Street Northwest. Uh, I think that one was about 15000 as well. Okay. Guess. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, bye. Yeah, man, like building this house, some of these contracts and stuff that that um we do, man, them HVAC people, they hit me for they hit me for a bag. They hit me for a bag, seriously. Real talk. Like, I ain't even gonna kid you. A lot of people don't realize that these people and they doing it, they they running this bag up in weeks. It don't take them no months to do nothing outside of whenever they got to come back and do the inspection with the inspector from the city or whatever. They will come in, knock that junk out, and they will hit you for 20, 30,000 without even thinking twice. Seriously. 20, 30,000, forget the $300 just to unclog the toilet. Imagine spending 20, 30,000 dollars and they getting that in a few weeks. Seriously, they running the bag up. If you know how to get it, if you know how to run it up, if you really know how to get that money. Look, what I'm telling you guys is I don't care how you get it as long as you're getting it legally. If you understand the game, because you may have a talent for, for working with your hands and being a little bit more mechanical. You may have a talent for, you know, engineering or cloud or cybersecurity or anesthesiologist and you love the medical field or whatever. It's money everywhere. It's all over. Whether you go to college, make sure you pick a STEM. If you go to a trade school, go to something where you can market yourself and then ultimately be able to break out for your own. It's so much money everywhere and people are willing to pay. People are willing to pay. You know why? Because if you do great work and you can be on time and you can pass the inspection, this is what I budgeted for. I'll gladly give you the money to be able to take care of that. I'll gladly get you the money to be able to do it. We so small minded. We only think, oh, my God, you know, uh, how can I become a rapper or a basketball player or this and that? Man, listen, bro, forget the forget the label. We more caught up with labels. Hey, what do you do for a living? I'm a uh, uh, director and this and that. Forget the label. We don't care about labels over here. We care about legally getting to the bag, minimizing the amount of money that we got to pay in taxes legally, 
and then making sure that we leverage that money that we make to ultimately take care of us for the rest of our lives. That's the goal. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you you an electrician. I don't care if you a, a, a surgeon. Any way it go, let's get to this bag. There's multiple ways to do it, whether you do a trade school or whether you do that, right? Just make sure that you're very, very intentional with how you do it. Minimize the debt that it takes in order to get there. Now, you could be a nurse. You could be whatever. You could be a content. Let's maximize the amount of money that we can get. Let's not go to jail for it. You don't have to scam. You ain't got to be out here in Atlanta running, running plays on people. Run the bag up, take care of business, and then maximize the amount that you get from it by minimizing the amount of mistakes that you have. That's it. That's the goal. Care about your title? Care what you do. If you get rich cleaning toilets, then get rich cleaning toilets. If you get rich doing junk removal, then you get rich doing junk removal. If you get rich installing H HVAC heating and cooling and all of this stuff, then get rich. But stop being lazy. Stop being lazy. It's that laziness that's ultimately preventing you from being successful. Seriously. Too many people just sitting around not doing nothing, thinking that somebody's going to come back and they're just going to give them something. I ain't waiting on nobody to give me nothing. I'm going to run it up. Let me read some of these super chats, and then we're going to move over to the last part of the show. <clears throat> um, Classy B says, tried to tell Cole to sit this, one on, sit this one out. I think Cole is okay. Cole is happy with his decision. He want to just live in his good space. He don't care about what's going on around him. I want to be more like Cole. Grayway says, he riding his bike, chilling. Grayway says, Banks, based on my bank account, I haven't even been. <laughs> That's why we got to get y'all. Gird it up. We got to get y'all to gird it up and get taking care of business. King Stennis says, I recon the military. I do. I think that the military is also. Military also has great benefits when it comes to buying a house. Um, they get you college for free. It's a lot of benefits to join in the military. Just be careful. You might be getting bust open. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to any young person that asks me, you can get a free education, experience, and a trade at the same time time with benefits and you can re uh, remove in some states paying property taxes and all of that stuff and you get better loans when it comes to mortgaging your house and all of that stuff so a lot of benefits and everything that you do uh tech coach ralph says people will spend five years a hundred thousand dollars on a major that makes them feel good but then five thousand uh, and six months for engineering boot camp that's backwards <laughs> kings and priests is in the building says uh, nine of 15 highest paid fields is engineering and computer science. Daniel Harris says, these new kids are lazy. They don't have the mental, physical endurance to last a summer season in HVAC and expecting immediate raises. It takes a while to get there. I'm glad you say that. I'm glad. Shout out to Sasi. I appreciate you. I'm glad you said that, Daniel Harris, because that leads me right into my last part of the conversation, which is something that I talked about on the Anton Daniels channel, but I want to go into it a little bit more extensively right now. Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey. What up to Mary Elizo, DLC, Demetrius, Emperor, everybody that's in the building. I appreciate y'all for continuing to rock, rock out with me. Dave Ramsey. Why is it popular... Ms. Q, I'm definitely going to read that Super Chat shortly. Why is it so popular to go against the advice of Dave Ramsey right now? I've always said that Dave Ramsey is 100% right, but his advice is honestly for people that's even trying to get straight to the, you know, trying to get to the starting line. When you want to get a little bit more, you know, deep dive into certain investments, breaking down banks, looking at individual stocks and whatever, that's not what he talks about with his baby steps. But how can you argue with a dude that's, what is bigger than a, a DECA millionaire? What's the triple one? He's well over $102 million in net worth. I don't really understand how people can argue against Dave Ramsey. But it's a lot of young people that got beef with Dave Ramsey. He had recently appeared on Fox News, but this is one example of a person that, has, that disagrees with Dave Ramsey. I'm so sick of people between the ages of 30 and 18 years old getting crap for being dumb with our finances. Because here's the reality. We're dumb with our finances because we have people like Dave Ram. Is it since a millionaire? Shout out to you. Thank you, uh, Wealth Building Journey. That's the first time that I heard it. Let me rewind this a little bit. Check out what this guy is saying. Our finances. 
Because here's the reality, we're done with our finances because we have people like Dave Ramsey giving us our financial advice. Recently, Dave Ramsey said that you should not buy a home until you've got 20% to put as a down payment on that home. Now you- So I don't even wanna go into a stupid rant because I'm limited on time, but these are the type of people that's showing up and they all over TikTok. I mean, they're all over TikTok basically saying, don't listen to Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey saying that if you want to finance a home that they saying, oh my God, you got to put at least 20% down or whatever, so on and so forth. And they're going to use all of this anecdotal experience and say stuff like, you know, because if you put 20% down, then what if you wait for a year and then you missed out on the appreciation and all this other type of stuff, right? And so it's, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. Putting 20% down, first of all, make sure that you get the best rates. It also limits the amount of money that you got to spend on private mortgage insurance. All of that, right? But this is recently Dave Ramsey appearing on Fox Business, and he was there to discuss what all of the, the rhetoric is going back and forth because it's now becoming popular for people to say that Dave Ramsey is wrong about finances, which is wild to me. Take a look. $1,000 saved. Mm. Here now is the founder and CEO of Ramsey Solutions, the financial icon himself, the master, the one and only Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Dave, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. So a two-part question for you. Does that number 1.46 million to retire, does that sound right to you? And if so, how does anybody get to that massive number for the retirement? Well, it, it's not enough for some and it's way too much for others. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know where that number comes from. It's something somebody just dreamed up in a poll. But obviously where you live, how you choose to live, the standard of living you want to retire at gives you the number that you need annually. And then we can back into the size of your nest egg that you need. So for, you know, a million dollars, you know, should generate, say, 8%. That'd be $80,000 a year to live off of. If you can live comfortably off of 80000 then a million's enough. If you need 160, it sounds like you need two million. So somewhere in there, but yeah, you can do it. You just need to start saving again. The good news is, is that we have found, we did the largest study ever done of millionaires in North America. And we found that the typical millionaire in America did not inherit their money. 89% or 89% of most people that are millionaires. This 100% dispels the myth especially from these people that's running in the victim Olympics. And I see so many people, even within black culture, saying, oh, my God, you inherited in order. They're old, we got that person because they're rich. 89% of millionaires, most millionaires, a lot of them are actually immigrants into this country. 89% of millionaires did not inherit their wealth, but they got it out of the mud and over 16 to 1700 new millionaires are made every single day. Every single day. And this just absolutely dispels the myth that everybody is inheriting wealth and generational wealth or whatever, but it's an easy talking point. It's an easy talking point in order to make the excuse for you not being what it is that you are. There's so many different ways to get a bag. But most of us have self-inflicted wounds. And most of us won't stay down long enough to actually endure enough to get to the bag. And most of us want to go out here and stretch out. And as soon as we get a little bit of money, we align our lifestyle with how much money we make. And we acquire a bunch of debt as a result of it. And we don't actually get it. Lamar Flanagan says, your stalkers AD say you inherited your wealth. Well, if I inherited my wealth, then where did my brothers go? And where did my mothers go? And where did my young? Because I got to, listen, I'm like uh, Brandon Johnson. I'm a middle child. How come my uh, two older brothers didn't get none of it and, and then my younger brother didn't get none of it either? Why do they still live regular lives, but I live an irregular life? If, if wealth was inherited, then how come my younger brother lives a regular life. My two older brothers live a regular life. My mother, who I'm taking care of personally, lives a regular life. Why was I only the person that, that got, got the money? I'm just curious. Have y'all ever asked yourself these questions before y'all even start to have this conversation with me? Hello? Hey, I'm going to call you right, right back. I'm going to call you right, right back, okay?
Okay, bye. Not millionaires because of inheritance. They did it the old-fashioned way. They earned it. And um, they were, the number one way they became millionaires was just simply putting money in their 401k mm -hmm. over a long period of time and getting their home paid off. It really wasn't rocket surgery. Dave, I'm going to ask you, the Wall Street Journal wrote this piece, it was probably a month and a half ago, about Dave Ramsey tells millions what to do with their money. People under 40 say he's wrong. There's a hashtag on the TikTok, which I don't use, but it says hashtag Dave Ramsey wouldn't approve. And it's a bunch of young people <laughs> uh, who essentially um, openly f uh, flout your recommendations about living more frugally and saving. I don't really understand why that's a, a, a big deal. Hey, live frugally, save more, invest more, stay down longer ultimately benefit and explode and then you could be able to live the life that you want to live i don't really yeah he said i'm a nigerian <laughs> i don't really understand why that's such a difficult thing to do that is not crazy and that's i i'm just gonna let you respond but i think that's gonna blow up in their face because once you start living high on the hog you live that life you want to live that lifestyle for the rest of your life and you're not gonna have the money to do it but what say you yeah. Well, I mean, anything on social media, you can find a lot of fun stuff on me. I'm, I'm real good clickbait, so <laughs> it works really good. Uh, so have at it. But yeah, and it's always been that way. I've been doing this for 35 years, and there's always a group of people who say you can't do it. Uh, and so the system has to change, and they're a victim, and they're entitled. And, you know, TikTok gives them a voice, or Instagram gives them a voice, or whatever, but it's always been that way. On, on talk radio, we gave them a voice. They could call in and scream at me, and it was fun. It made great radio. But the truth is, is that this Gen Z generation and the millennials who caught a bunch of crap are excellent generations. Uh, what we're seeing with both of them is there is a segment of them that is very serious and very good with their money. They believe in it. They believe in saving, they believe in investing, that they believe in the free enterprise system. And then there's a segment of them that just sucks. They're just awful. I mean, their participation trophy, they live in their mother's basement and they can't figure out why they can't buy a house because they don't work, you know, and stuff like that. But I've got 400 millennials, 500 millennials working on our team here at Ramsey. They're incredible. I love them. Gen Z all over the building. I love them. They're fabulous. And so it's just this one segment of whiners on TikTok or something that pops up because they don't want to face the fact that they got to control the person in their mirror. Two things that I learned from this. No matter who you are, no matter how many people you help, no matter how God-fearing you are, no matter how basic and sound the advice is, um, you know, that, that, that comes out, ultimately it comes out like this. You're always going to have people who don't like you that try to discount you, even if you're Dave Ramsey. Here are the baby steps. They're very basic. Number one, this is Dave Ramsey's baby steps. Start an emergency fund, meaning that that's the way that you start to leapfrog into uh, being financially successful by giving yourself a mental barrier or overcoming this mental barrier by saying, hey, hey, if anything happens, I don't have to feel like I'm starting back at zero. I got a little bit of a cushion over here. Number two, focus on paying off your debts. The debt snowball method, which is basically you pay the minimum amount on all of your debts and then your smallest debt. You pay as much as you possibly can, and then you roll that over into the next debt until you ultimately kill all of your debt, all right? Remove the debt. Third thing, complete your emergency fund. Basically, you want to save, I believe, three to six months. This is what he preaches. I don't necessarily preach this. I pre preach something completely different. I say that you should continue to stockpile money into assets that are liquid enough if, for you to be able to tap into it if anything was to ever happen. But he's basically saying, hey, have enough money to where if anything happens or you get laid off, so where you'll be able to sustain and be able to maintain until you bridge yourself into the next situation, okay? Number four, save for retirement. It's one of the biggest and fastest ways that people become uh, millionaires is they fund their retirement and they let their money continue to compound over a period of time without all of the tax burdens and they remove the tax burdens that come along with that in order for them ultimately to raise their net worth. Number five, save for college funds, meaning that you, won't, you don't want to put your children in debt 
and you want to allow for them to continue to be successful without the burden that comes with student loans and you want to teach them how to be fiscally responsible. Number six, pay off your home. A lot of people like to hold on to the debt because they keep saying the interest rates. Let me tell you something. I'm not giving a bank a dime. I'm not giving a bank one dime. That's my money. I work for it. I traded in my time for money. I'm not giving a bank any money and interest just because they're saying that money is cheap. I'm not doing it. Number seven, build wealth. That's when you start, start to become philanthropic. You start to move a little bit more. You can have some fun. You can start to really start to invest in other things. You can start businesses, all of that other type of stuff. And it's very, very basic. This is very basic information. And then you can start to go into the nuances of what wealth looks like and how you should start to invest your money and what kind of businesses you can start and then how you prevent yourself from giving more over to taxes. It's that simple. It's very, very much that simple. So listen, for all of the people that is fighting advice, and I can take advice from anybody. I don't care if it's Dave Ramsey. I don't care who it is. A lot of people have some really, really good advice. And if you mine through it and you take the meat and spit out the bones, then you can ultimately become successful. Some stuff I don't agree with. Some stuff I do agree with. The stuff that I agree with, I take it and I implement it into my life. I'm not trying to limit myself. All right? It's very much that simple. Shout out to Dave Ramsey. Let me read some of these super chats and then I'm going to get y'all out of here for the day. Uh, BSQ says, if your teen is driven, you can get trade school or, or you and I for dirt cheap, $40 per semester flat. My son's a junior at the university at 14 years old, no debt. Shout out to you. Let me give you a round of applause for that one. Yep, we was getting college credits in high school. Key James said, Dave Ramsey is the truth and he makes sense. And I'm in my early 30s and can't agree with the more. Dave Ramsey comes from generation of hard work and play later. And you really get the benefit as a result of that. It's so much sweeter on this side. Victor Williams says, like Dave always says, these people are taking their advice from a broke uncle when an opinion, they always have an opinion, but never have a job, make it make sense. King Stennis says, after reading his book, I got back to W-2 work just to invest in a 401k. Run it up, bro. I don't care how you get it. Run it up. Shout out to LeGarrett with the support. Thank you, LeGarrett. I appreciate you. Civ Lap is in the building, says, tomorrow is not promised to anyone, so the youngins are living the Carpe Diem lifestyle. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you, Civ Lap. Victor Williams says, they also don't like Dave or take his advice simply because he's a conservative. I take advice from anybody that's rich, whether you're conservative whether, or whether you are a liberal. A man on one says, can you start a brokerage with nothing? Yep. Go online. Uh, I don't like to recommend certain places just because they're not paying me, but I like the Fidelity. You can go on fidelity.com and open up a brokerage account, and then they teach you how to fund it later on or whatever like that. But you can absolutely open up a brokerage account with no kind of problem whatsoever. All right. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for always supporting the platform. I see some of y'all is over there watching. Shout out to LaShad Took said I'm back in the Patreon. Sometimes it take you take for you to be gone for you to realize what you're missing and you tap into the bag chasers. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Teach Hanley 30% off your first order plus 20% off for life. Also, also, we got the Q show tonight. That's absolutely popping. Thank you, guys. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. If y'all have not already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. I see some of y'all is over there watching the Eclipse. Have fun with that. Listen, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all later. I need y'all to do me one more favor before we get up out of here. Look at me. Make sure you share this with your family and friends. We don't want to uh, be successful by ourselves. I love you. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to see y'all tonight for the Q show. Peace. Share this with your friends.